Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Hmm. Noted like I've said this in a while, where we look at children's books from an adult perspective. A little bit of analysis, a little bit of commentary, some humor, some serious. Some crazy. A little bit. A little bit. Especially when we're surprised by a book. <laughs> well, I don't think this one will be too surprising. We are sticking with Little Golden Books. Specifically, The Musicians of Bremen. Hmm, that cover looks familiar to me. Don't know why. Retold by Ben Cruz, illustrated by Anne, Anne, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this, Schwinniger. And of course, this is an old, um, is this Aesop's or just a regular fable? This isn't the version I remember reading. I know that right now, because mine was part of a larger book. And once again, this is in a stack that I don't know how it got to me because it doesn't have my name in it. But moving on, a little golden book, The Musicians of Bremen. There was once a donkey who had carried sacks to the mill for many years. At last he grew too old to work and his master planned to get rid of him. When the donkey found this out, he decided to run away to Bremen. He thought he might become a street musician there. The art's very nice. And once again, it feels slightly watercolor style, but I don't think it is. It's very well done, though. Good line work, good coloring and shading, good directionality on the light. He had not traveled far when he saw a hound lying near the road and gasping for breath. Why are you panting so, friend? asked the donkey. I've been running a long way, replied the hound. I have grown too old to hunt, and my master wants me killed. All that went dark. Yeah, get rid of him at least leaves some room for interpretation. Mm-hmm. Also, why would you kill the hunting dog? It's still good to be a house dog. Because apparently people don't have house dogs, and apparently you don't get to retire once you're too old to work. You get gotten rid of. But they usually get retired to a different house, so they can live out their lives happily. Yeah, but remember when the fable was first come up with, you know, you didn't spend supplies on an animal that couldn't work. Hmm. Why not come with me? asked the donkey. I'm going to try my luck as a musician in Bremen. You hounds have powerful voices, so perhaps you could do the same. The dog liked the idea. He and the donkey walked on together. So apparently now that he's traveling with someone, the hound no longer needs to run. Once again, very nice line work. The coloring is very pastel. It's very nice, very detailed. And I like the scarecrow in the background of this picture. The shading is really nice, though it seems kind of odd here. It's almost like the light's coming from below on the fence. See how it's highlighted on the bottom? Hmm. I find it interesting on the body of both the donkey and the hound. It almost looks like they're drawing the ribs showing. Because you're seeing three lines behind the front foreleg. Well, maybe they're using that to illustrate age. Hmm. Could be marks of wrinkles. Or that they have gotten skinnier with old age. Mm hmm You know, lost muscle tone. Yes, or sagging skin. Hmm. Oh, those ears. Not long after, they met a cat with a face as long as a lonesome road in winter. What is the matter? asked the donkey. I am getting old, said the cat, and I cannot catch mice anymore. When I heard that my mistress was going to drown me, I ran away. Holy smokes, Batman! What the jeepadick? What? Yeah, for kids. <laughs> Everyone knows how good you cats are at serenading, said the donkey. Come with us to Bremen. I'm sure you can become a musician there. How good they are at serenading. I don't think... I think this donkey knows what humans think of cats when they're meowing outside. There's uh, usually shoes being thrown at them. Yes, but you know, a good caterwaul has a lot in common with a modern punk band. Shh. Oh? <laughs> <laughs> Loud noises, indistinguishable lyrics, a general cacophony. <laughs> no offense to anyone if that happens to be your chosen preference in music. I'm okay with some punk music. I just haven't heard it in a while. The colors are just so nicely chosen for this. And as stated in the, the paragraphs, the animals are all along the road looking at each other and 
like we said just before we started reading this, that cat looks so sad. And there's a village in the background. Just the detail is so nice, even for the background objects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed the wagon with the hay in it. And I think that must be a church by how tall that spire is. Mm -hmm. After traveling some distance, the three animals came to a farmyard. On the gate stood a rooster, crowing with all his might. Why are you screaming so? asked the donkey. The cook says there is company coming on Sunday, and she will put me in the soup, replied the rooster. I plan to crow just as long as I can. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it usually the hens that go in the soup, though? The hens lay the eggs. They're of more value because they produce additional food. A rooster is useful, one rooster, to fertilize the hens. Or to make them produce. Because they don't always fertilize the eggs. They just use the rooster to encourage the laying of eggs. Well, said the donkey, we are going to Bremen to become musicians. Since you have such a fine, loud voice, why don't you come with us? We just called it screaming a paragraph ago. The rooster agreed, and the four runaways went on together. It's very nicely done, though the rooster's tail feathers feel more like grass than tail feathers to me. They're very ruffled. I wonder what happened. Oh, well, he's very upset. Hmm. Also, I like the sunflowers. They are nice, and also interesting. The rooster may be the youngest out of all of them, because... He's the only one whose answer didn't relate to age. Hmm. They could not reach Bremen that day, so they decided to spend the night in the woods. The donkey and the dog lay down under a large tree. The cat nestled in the branches, and the rooster flew up to the very top. Very nicely done. I like the choice of detail. I should really talk about what the artist chooses to put detail into. They're not drawing individual leaves in the branches. They draw this really nice shape and then they highlight parts of it or shade parts of it to give the illusion of multiple leaves and shape to it and they have little tufts of grass then general green to give that sense of a grassy meadow underneath the tree very nicely done before they fell asleep the rooster saw a light in the distance there must be a house over there he said let us go and look said the donkey there may be food and shelter for us it's very interesting how the artist chose to put them in the order of height. Well, that also happens to be the order that they joined the party. The donkey started it, then the hound, then the cat, then the rooster. Hmm. Also, by putting them in height order, you are able to see all of them from this perspective. And it acts as an arrow to the next page. Remember, composition. The animals walked toward the light and soon drew near to a cozy little cottage. The donkey went to the window and looked in. What do you see? asked the rooster. I see a table laid out with plenty to eat and drink, and a group of men sitting at it enjoying themselves, answered the donkey. Robbers by the look of them, said the hound, peering inside. I wish we could have some of their fine supper, said the cat. If only we could get inside, said the rooster. Uh-oh, I have an interesting idea about the plan they're going to be using. <laughs> Also, this varies from every other version of the story that I'm familiar with. Mm. And the art is really nice still. Though I'm trying to... Uh, ah, I see the rooster sitting on the window shutters. Yes. I was first going to... I couldn't figure out where the rooster was... How the rooster was above the window in this shot. And then, ooh. Also, how are those robbers not seeing the cat? Because the cat's more obvious than the others. Well, if they're not looking, also how clean is the window? How good is their eyesight? How also, focused are they on their food and loot? Also, there are smoking pipes. Well, they are robbers. Yep. You know, not good people get to do not good things. The animals soon thought of a way to drive the robbers out of the house. The donkey put his forefeet on the windowsill, and the hound stood on his back. The cat then climbed on the dog, and the rooster flew up and perched on the cat's head. Oh, that's a nice illustration. It illustrates the donkey already up on the windowsill, the dog thereafter on top of the donkey, and the cat working his way up so the rooster can land on his head. Then they all began to perform their music. The donkey brayed, the hound barked, 
The cat meowed, and the rooster crowed with such force that the window rattled. <laughs> the noise was so horrible that the robbers fled in terror. <laughs> well, for the first performance, not too bad. Though, I gotta say, the robbers were a little awkwardly drawn in that. Well, every other picture so far has been of animals. The illustrator may not be as experienced with drawing the human form. But it's still comical. The animals rushed inside and ate their fill of the robber's feast. Apparently something for everyone. Apparently. Uh, like another book we've read, where they all had to, Oh, I don't like this, and I don't like this. Let's all move out. Yes. When the four musicians had finished eating, each found a comfortable sleeping place for himself. The donkey lay down in the yard, the dog crouched behind the door, the cat curled up on the hearth, and the rooster perched on the roof. Soon they fell asleep. I'm guessing the owners come back and either thank them all or something else entirely. The robbers were watching the house from a distance. About midnight they saw that the light was out. There is nothing to fear now, said one robber. I will go back and see if our gold is safe. <laughs> oh, he's going to talk about some fierce animals guarding the gold, I'm betting. The robber went into the cottage. In the darkness, the cat's fiery eyes looked like burning coals. But when the robber tried to strike a light by them, the cat leaped up, spat at him, and scratched his face. As the robber rushed for the door, the dog sprang up and bit him on the leg. He is not going to have a fun time. Ooh. In the yard, the robber ran into the donkey, who kicked him hard. All the while, the rooster cried, Cock-a-doodle-doo! with all his might. This poor guy's, oh, he's going to have a horrible story to tell his friends. The robber ran back to his companions as fast as his legs would carry him. There is a witch in that house, he told them. She flew at me and scratched my face. Then a man by the door stabbed me in the leg, and a monster in the yard struck me a terrible blow. And up on the roof sat the judge who cried, Kill the scoundrel, do! Wild imagination that guy has. Join the club. The robbers ran away and never came back to the house again. The four musicians liked their new home and decided to stay. And there they remain, making music to their heart's content. I just have one question right here. Where are they getting food? Other than that, art was fantastic for this book. There was a couple awkward moments with the people, but the animals are done wonderfully. The color choices are very well done. Lighting, shading, all very nice. So you said there were alternate versions? Well, it's obviously a house full of robbers, but I remember the animals being innocent and not knowing the people were robbers. Ah. And they were trying to perform to earn their way into the home. So plying their music in trade for food and shelter, which is a common thing that traveling musicians would do. Ah. And they did end up staying at the house, but they thought they were saving it for the nice people. So they were waiting for the nice owners to come back. Yeah, this one just leaves it like they are now living there, animals alone. I thought they couldn't really take care of themselves because the donkey can eat the grass, the rooster can find bugs, the dog can go out and hunt, so is the cat. Except that it's been established that both of them are too old to hunt. Well, hunt the way humans want them to. So they could probably scrounge up some stuff on their own. Mm-hmm. And them working together could probably do a pretty good job of getting food for both of them. Mm-hmm. Because they could work and do tricks and traps. And the rooster could fly up high and scout for them. So, what do you think? Well, it's the musicians of Bremen, so you pretty much know the basic layout going in. Yeah, that's probably why I recognized it. But I didn't actually recognize the name. But something about a donkey, a dog, and a cat, and a rooster all together. Well, even Jim Henson's puppet shop did a version of this. Oh, is they all take turns looking into the window and what they actually see and what they think they see are two different things. Like they see this nice family and they're like, oh yes, he's cutting up the roast to serve the family. No, that was the head robber counting out the shares of gold. Ah. Uh -huh. So there was a disconnect between what was being seen and what was actually happening. Ah. Uh -huh. And this has been The Musicians of Bremen, retold by Ben Cruz, illustrated by Anne Schwinniger. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, we have lots of other Ember's Reading Room entries 
Uh, we even have a whole playlist of little golden books. Would like to check out this particular little golden book for yourself? Check below for an Amazon link. Little golden books tend to be in print still, so we'll try to link you back to it. Oh, usually on Amazon I find used copies. So even then I'll make sure to link back to it. There's also always an Amazon link directly. Just for shopping in general. And considering what little golden books go for now, you might want to grab a used copy. These were 87, 89 cents back in the day. They now retail for 4.99 USD. Just feel like shopping in general? Check out the Ebates link. Sign up and get cash back for shopping at stores you already probably shop at. Especially useful going into the holiday season. And we do get kickbacks if you uh, use the links and make purchases. Amazon specifically for purchases. Ebates only if you make a qualifying purchase within the first 30 days. So it's all up to you. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Yeah, we're not paid programming. We're kind of unpaid programming. Unless you count the change we get from YouTube ads. Yeah, yeah, well, it does exist, so you could count it. Thank you again for listening.